Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to the Real Talk Sports Show. I'm your host, Minister Jonathan Simmons, and we're broadcasting to you live from Atlanta's incredible radio, WIGO AM 1570. We're also going to be heard online, WIGOAM.com, or you can, if you have a mobile device, smartphone, iPad, any of the above, all of the above, you will find that you can find us on TuneIn Radio. It's a free application. If you don't have it already, download the application. Search for either WIGO 1570 or better yet, search for Real Talk Sports and voila, you will find us broadcasting to you live uh, on the air. Well, unless you've been in the cave, you know a lot has jumped off in the world of sports uh, this last week or so. And since the show is called Real Talk Sports, we are going to bring it to you uh, with some real talk. Uh, but uh, before we do all of that, we want to bring you some good stuff. Uh, because that's the other thing about our show. It is sports from a different perspective. And we will be, in fact, uh, talking to a group of high schoolers tonight. We're going on both sides of South Metro Atlanta. We're going to be going up uh, towards Atlanta itself, into Atlanta, bringing the guys on from Mays High School. Uh, they're going to be in the mix with us here. Uh, we got some coaches. We got some players. We even have uh, one of the, the president of the Booster Club will be joining us. The lovely Jennifer Mackey, a.k.a. the Sports Diva, will be joining us a little bit later. And then from my hometown, Stockbridge High School, uh, we're looking for the Stockbridge Tigers to join us uh, towards the second half of the high school segment. And they're going to talk to us again with some players uh, to let us know what's going on with these young men, uh, not only just on the field, uh, but off the field. And last but not least, uh, our special guest for the evening, uh, she's author of what they call The Purple Cinderella. It's a book, but it's, it's also a movement. I'm talking about the lovely and beautiful Lily Young will be joining us in the final segment uh, to chop it up about some tough stuff. Ray Rice, uh, what's going on with uh, domestic violence in our nation. We'll also talk a little bit about the problem that the Hawks are now having. Another NBA owner has put their foot in it. And speaking of owners, folks, uh, we got some breaking news about an NFL owner and maybe even the commission himself might be in a little trouble due to you got the tape, I got the tape, nobody's got the tape. Well, it's a uh, tape amundrum here uh, in the NFL and big problems going on. And now again, we have coach from Maze. He's going to introduce himself to you right now because he's on the go. <laughs> Uh, this is Coach Corey Jarvis, uh, head football coach at Benjamin Mays High School. Well, Coach, listen, man, it's a pleasure to have you uh, back in the box again. Uh, always fun when you guys from Mays come in here. The last time, we had a little rivalry thing going on between you and Douglas, so that was a lot of excitement for everybody, for sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 I forgot that, that was when we came in. Yeah, that was a little excitement there. Well, speaking of excitement, you guys came off a big game uh, this weekend. Everybody talked about it as one of the key DeKalb County games of the week. Just give us a little uh, recap on how you guys did and uh, what your thoughts were. Not the game is, is in, in the books. Okay, uh, you know, we went against uh, MLK, my former school. Uh, we were able to win uh, 34 to nothing uh, defensively. I felt like we played well at times. I felt like we could have played better. Uh, made a couple mistakes here and there. Uh, then on offense, I felt like we played one of our better games. We were able to run the football and throw the ball when we needed to. And I, I feel like our guys played real well. And, you know, we were able to do some things that we needed to do to improve uh, for the next week. Well, Coach Jarvis, you, you spoke that like a true coach. Here it is, you won 34 to nothing. Coach said, well, you know, we had a little few little things we had to get taken care of. So, uh, <laughs> spoken like a true coach. But you mentioned how your offense uh, did well. Tell people here who are, you know, big fans of high school football, what type of offense do you really like to run over there at Mace? Well, you know, we're, we're based out of a spread offense, you know, but the thing that we do is we, we're a downhill running team. Okay. Uh, we use our speed on the outside to stretch the field vertically. Uh, we also put our kids in space. But, you know, we have a big offensive line, so we like to get behind them and run the football. I was going to say, Coach, you got, uh, I guess, the equivalent of the Twin Towers uh, over <laughs> there at, uh, at Mays. Why don't you tell people a little bit about that uh, tremendous old line that you guys have over there? Uh, well, you know, we start off with uh, you got Dallas Warmack, uh, who's an Alabama commit. Uh, Dallas plays uh, actually every position on the offensive line from center guard and tackle. Uh, then we have another young man, Mason Sims, who uh, has several uh, D1 offers, I, I believe Georgia State, and uh, a couple other offers as well. Uh, probably our smallest lineman is our center, uh, Michael Worthen, and he's a, a senior as well. Uh, he's like 5'11", about 330. Uh, uh, you, did you say 3.30, Coach? Yeah, Not 3 2.30, 3.30, 3 right? 3.30, yeah. And that's your smallest lineman. Yeah, that, he's probably our smallest guy. Yeah, there you have it. <laughs> and then uh, on the right side, you have our right guard, Keenan Anderson, who's a senior as well. Uh, Keenan's a 6'5", he's 360 pounds. And then our right tackle, of course, is uh, Malik Mackey. Uh, Malik uh, has a Middle Tennessee offer right now, and Malik is 6'7", uh, like 325 or 320. 
Well, I'm going to tell you something, Coach. Just listen to that. Uh, let me know that uh, if I was back in the day as a youngster, I'd have no part of wanting to play <laughs> against <laughs> Mays when you have not one, not two, but three 300-pounders on that line. Yeah, and then we got some two, two young kids who play a lot, like James English, who's a uh, uh, center. He's like 6'2", about 300 pounds. And then uh, Quavius St. Phil, he's a junior as well. He's like 6'2", uh, 315. So you know we got we got we got some big boys. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to uh, I'm gonna talk to the, to uh, Miss Jennifer and see what uh, her and some of these other parents are feeding these boys. Cause you you just listed <laughs> off five gentlemen that are not even 20 years old and they're over 300 pounds. I mean, and so I see now where you talk about running downhill, utilizing what you have with these guys. But my understanding is, and hearing from all the, uh, the the pundits and the guys that look at your team, these guys are not just big, but they got good footwork. Yeah, you know they they're not just big slow guys. You know they're actually athletic. Uh, you know, I laugh because Big Keenan, the 6'5", 360 kid, he played golf and played basketball, and you know he's a real athletic kid. Uh, Malik, you know, Mackey played, he played basketball as well, and then uh, like Dallas probably could have played you know, another sport as well, and I believe he did do track, and I think Mason did track as well, and you know, uh, Mike, Mike actually played lacrosse and played goalkeeper. Wow. So, you know, they're actually athletic kids. So, so really for you, I mean, when I hear this, one of the things I talk to people about all the time is that I like the idea when coaches and parents still like their children to play multiple sports because I think that you're in a situation that uh, uh, that when you do that, it, it, I think it helps prevent some injuries. It just gives you some flexibility, some other muscle coordinating that maybe you can get from other sports. Yeah, you know, well, one thing I always said about linemen, I, I like linemen to do two sports, to be honest. I like them to do uh, track and then I also like them to do wrestling. Wrestling, and, hell yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, I actually had a couple of kids, you know, who footwork was kind of awful back in my old school, and I made them play tennis. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I played <laughs> tennis um, back when I was in high school. I was 5'11", about 255, and I played tennis, and I actually made the final seed on his tennis team, so uh, that footwork is very important. Well, listen, already, as we expect, uh, the Mays folks have blown the phone lines up. We have Nature on the line. Nature, what you got? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic, Bye. fantastic. So good to have you on the show and joining us. Well, what, what kind of kind words do you have for your crew over here at Mays? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I like, to, I like to support. I like the fact that you guys have called in, and we really are very excited to have. I don't call any of these uh, young gentlemen that come into the studio uh, football players. I call them student athletes. And I'm so happy that the parents at Mays and the Booster Club and all the people there are giving the coaches support and also emphasizing the, the student part of being a student athlete. Yeah, that's, that, that's, a, that's another thing about this class, this senior class. Uh, if you look at the whole class overall, their total GPA is like 3.3, you know, uh, overall, and then they all have uh, either qualified or are at the point of qualifying. I think we had a little technical malfunction here, Coach. Just everybody hang tight here. We're going to have the engineer uh, put a little music on because we have uh, unplugged ourselves momentarily, but we'll be back here soon to get situated here back on the line. That's what happens when the, uh, the non-engineer gets back in here, so... Let's get you situated here. Always something going on. My engineer is giving me that look. Are you ready now? <laughs> almost, almost being it. So I just pulled out my whole headset. Okay, I think we're good now. <laughs> All right, now we're here. <laughs> All right, well, that was uh, Nature again giving a, a good call in here. And, Coach, I know you, you are really on a tight schedule. Uh, I know all the guys want to interview you because the way you guys are starting off, obviously, this season and all the big guys you have. But listen, how can people find out more about what's going on over at Mays High School? Well, uh, you know, our football website is uh, maysratedfootball.com. Uh, we try to keep it, you know, up to date. And there's a lot of information on there from the Twitter account to uh, our Facebook account. And then also, you know, we do some things where we actually put – uh, the different schedules and the games and players of the week and things like that on there as well. Um, then you also can come up by the school or you know, call the school and get information from our 
athletic director, uh, Natasha Harrigan, and our uh, administrative staff as well. Well, I like the fact that you guys uh, seem to be right on top of the social media, You're talking about that Twitter page, and uh, you got people following you on that. You got you have a Facebook page as well, I assume? Yes, we do. There you go. Well, listen, folks, if you want to find out more about Mays High School, just go ahead and Google them up. Uh, go on Facebook. Please like their page and definitely follow them on Twitter. Well, who's your next game, Coach? Uh, we play Southwest DeKalb uh, next weekend in Dome coming at the Dome uh, at 3 o'clock. Uh-oh, they're going to be rocking in the Dome. Southwest DeKalb against Mays High School. That's always a, a big game. And, of course, because it's so big, holding it in the place where your hometown Atlanta Falcons play their home games. But, Coach Jarvis, man, we appreciate you so much. And uh, we look forward to some good stuff. And we're going to get out there, folks. And uh, we have been, you know, talking with the Booster Club about trying to get you guys some more live video coverage. So, Coach, we're going to try to come out there and, uh, and do a, a test game okay. and see what we got, give you guys a little uh, a little more notoriety. You guys got plenty right now. I know you got you guys on YouTube and everywhere else, but we really want to come out and support because uh, we feel that, again, uh, in Atlanta, especially in South Metro Atlanta, uh, this radio station is committed to be the community radio station and really do everything we can to support these student-athletes. And speaking of them on your way out, Coach, why don't you bring the first student-athlete in to join us? Okay, I sure will. There you go. Coach Jarvis, thanks for joining us, man. Thank you. There he is, Coach Jarvis. Here's someone that's going to be joining us in just a second, folks. He's giving me the information here about the school. I'm going to drag her in right quick. She doesn't want to do this, but I'm going to drag her in because uh, she used to be behind the, hype, the, behind the mic with us here. Uh, we used to call her simply the sports a diva. She is the president of the Mays uh, Football Booster Club, and I'm talking about the wife of my good partner, Mr. Malcolm Mackey, the lovely Jennifer Mackey in the house. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Hello, Jonathan. How are you? It's glad to be back uh, uh, behind the mic with you this evening. You, you look you look like you never never missed a beat. You look comfortable <laughs> right there. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. That's right. Well, listen, we're going to get the, everybody set up here. I see that you have Malik. He seems like he's grown about 22 inches since the last time I've seen him. <laughs> but we're going to get him in here and get him set up and get him all mic'd up real quick. We'll get a headset for him as well. But, Jen, listen, uh, just tell people a little bit while I'm getting Malik all set up. Uh, what has really been uh, happening there with the Booster Club and some of the things that you guys are doing to really promote Mays football? Well, I think at this point, the main thing, the, the football team is promoting the excitement itself. that Coach uh, Jarvis is bringing to Mays High School and to the Hill. You know, even you know, even though he's a Harper High graduate, I, I'll give him a pass on that. He's still Atlanta Public Schools. Oh, no doubt. And i tell you something. It is, um, I, I'm really just... Uh, Excited about what you're doing. I know it's a lot of work for you. I know talking to different parents, they talk about how much the time it takes you know, to get their kids kind of in the mix. So uh, I know for you, I mean, you're working, uh, you got a husband, uh, you got uh, two children. A uh, recent uh, graduate from Georgia Tech, is that right, your daughter? Yes, yes, Rambling Rex. So I'm, I'm very, very excited. I have two. Two and oh in the yeah. building, two and oh. Yes. Georgia Tech, Look, Yellow Jackets. Yes, now I have one, one down and one to go. Let's see where this one is going to end up going to school. Um, I, I'm very excited about his progress and uh, what Coach Jarvis is doing over at Mays. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get the, the, the big man in the house, Mr. Malik. Uh, welcome to the show, young man. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, listen, man, it's good to see you, bro. It's been, it's been a minute. The last time I saw you, you were about 6'4", about 290. And now I guess you're coming in about, what, 6'7", 6'8", about 315, 320? Like 330 right now. 330, praise the Lord. And I have to feed him. Right. <laughs> listen, man, uh, uh, you're a junior now, is that correct? I'm a senior Senior right now. now. So this is it. You ready to leave home, too? Yep. Oh, my gosh. Look, man, you know, you, I don't know what your mom's going to do, man. That might, that might be a refrigerator freezer right there. No, wait, at least I don't have to feed him anymore. So that's the good thing. That's, that's right. Good. Let, that's let, right. Let, let the university handle that. Well, Malik, uh, now you, you're playing in a tackle position. Do you have a preference? Do you prefer pass blocking, run blocking? Do you have any preference? I mean, I could do either or, to be honest. I'm actually getting better at my position right now. So, yeah, I could do anything. Now, I know you guys were part of the, uh, the Cam Newton 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament. Uh, I believe you guys won that tournament this year. Um, how important was it for you and your teammates to get out there early in the summer and kind of, you know, see how you guys are doing against some of the other top schools in the state of Georgia? I mean, it was a good thing for us. I mean, it made us, like, way better, like, in the season, and hopefully we could just become a better team. Now, what are some of the things that you guys do? I always ask this question. What are some of the things that you guys do off the field? Do you have any activity, like, in the community that the coach does or you guys like to do, uh, maybe, you know, help some of the elderly people or maybe mentor some of the younger guys, anything that you, you like to do? Well, I've been doing the community service, like, just helping out with the um, community. Well, I tell you, man, that's that's, uh, that's big stuff, and I know your mom is, is influences you on that quite a bit. Yeah, they've been doing some things, um, and we'll be doing more things during the season at the Summer Hill uh, Community Center. 
Um, so they've been trying to give back that way. They they did um, help with the elderly weekend and the setup over there. They have also been invited to Hoosier Memorial United Methodist Church on the offensive line, worshipped with us uh, last two Sundays ago. So it was very it was a pleasure to have all the boys at church with us that Sunday. Um, I think my father had a big kick out of taking them to Golden Corral to eat afterwards. I think that was his. I think his <laughs> wallet though got hit real hard when he left out of there. And the boys got a chance at church to meet. Um, you actually UGA Hall of Famer Chuck Jones um, got a chance okay. to, to to talk to them after church, and I thought that that was a real uh, benefit for for them all. Well, listen, uh, it is um, always uh, a pleasure to have not only the student athletes here, but the parents like yourself. Uh, certainly, people calling in. Or oh, speaking of calling in, folks, I didn't want you to forget. Calling line is now open 404 361 1571. You're listening to the Real Talk Sports Show as we broadcast to you from Atlanta's incredible radio, WIGO AM 1570. You also can check it out online, www.wigoam.com. And you can find us now on any mobile device, Jen. You can now pick us up, no problem. The free tune in radio app. And I'm going to go ahead and put a plug in for myself. Don't even have to look for WIGO, just put in Real Talk Sports. And you will find us broadcasting so, Jonathan, live right you're, now. You're big time now. You're big time. <laughs> well, I, I think my head might be getting a little bit big, but I, I don't know what time but we really got. Well, I, you know, it, it, it's all the things that are going on, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about this a little bit later with our guests from the evening, because uh, one of the things we're going to do, folks, uh, in the second half of the broadcast, after we speak with these young men from Mays and Stockbridge, we will, in fact, be dealing a little bit with the Ray Rice issue. Um, I have two ladies here that bring a very uh, different perspective. Uh, my uh, main guest, uh, she will tell you her story on how she's had first-hand experience in this. And, of course, Jen, uh, for those people who don't know, again, she is uh, married, happily married, to uh, my good friend and buddy, uh, Malcolm Mackey, uh, Georgia Tech Hall of Fame, played on that sensational 1991 uh, Georgia Tech Final Four team, NBA first-round draft pick. And I think he played over 10 years in Europe as well. Yeah. Yes, 14 years total uh, playing pro ball, which which is a blessing. That's right. Mm -hmm. So these two ladies are going to give you, I think, a little bit different perspective. We're also going to take a look at some of the breaking news that's going on because there's lots of stuff that is happening in terms of we now have NFL owners uh, being brought up on charges. We have a lot of things going on, a possible questioning even of the NFL uh, being uh, not totally forthcoming about what evidence they had and when they had it. So we're going to be talking about a lot of that in the second half. Well, uh, Jen, Booster Club, do you guys have a separate website where people can find out more information about you guys? We don't have a separate website, but our Facebook page um, will usually have all of our updates. Whatever we have will go on um, our main website and then also our Facebook page at Mays Raiders Touchdown Club. All right, well, the lines are blowing up as we expect. Anytime Mays comes in the house, it's on and popping. Lynn is on the line. Lynn, welcome to our show. Hello, Lynn, are you there? We can hear you real good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. You want to give a big shout out, I'm sure, to the maze contingent that we have in the building. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Oh, well, you... <laughs> All right. Well, you know Stockbridge is in the house. They're waiting to come on next. So you wanted to make sure that you got the... <laughs> she wanted to make sure, <laughs> she wanted to make sure she got the plug in for Morrow. All right. Well, listen, we, we surely do, man. But I'm going to tell you something. I thank you so much for calling to support because that's one of the things that we ask all the parents, the boosters to do. Uh, these young men, we like to have them on. We like to have them talk to you. We also like to have them tell you what they're doing off the field. As you can hear, many of the young men that have come here, like Malik and some of the others, uh, they're attending church services. They're going to help in the community. So to me, that's the most important thing. And they can't do that without your support. So we thank you so much for calling. And call us again next week, win or lose. Well, there it is. We got a Marvel fan in the house. You know, I, I should have told Lynn, you know, her boys never showed up. They never came in the studio. But I guess they figured they would do their talking on the on field. On the field. On the field. Well, listen, now, the phone lines are still blowing up. Again, you can call us, 404-361-1571. Well, Jen, I know you still have a few more athletes out there that uh, need to come in and chat with us, so we're going to have you get them assembled. Uh, I'm going to check out the next caller right here and get everything set up on the line. You're listening again, folks, to the Real Talk Sports Show as we broadcast to you from WIGO AM 1570, Atlanta's Incredible Radio. And it is a full house here in the studio. Uh, we are doing everything we can to bring you uh, the technology uh, from every aspect. As a matter of fact, folks, we are actually streaming the broadcast uh, as well, a video stream. So you can go on and uh, check us out. 
on the video stream. Just go to uh, uh, our, the Real Talk Sports Facebook page, hit Ustream Live button, and bam, you will see the maze gentlemen uh, right there streaming to you live on video. We're going to get them with their headset set up so they can kind of hear who's on the line and who's calling. And I'm going to have each of these gentlemen introduce themselves to you. The phone lines, of course, are blowing up, folks, as we expect when we have Mays in here and we have Stockbridge High School also here as well. So it's getting crazy already. I'm going to have these two gentlemen introduce themselves to you right now. Young man, right next to me. Go ahead. Come here close. <clears throat> I'm Nate Trez Patrick, defensive man, number nine, Mays High. Maze High, number nine in the building. Go ahead, young man. Dallas Wormet, number 59, Maze High. We got some defense. You offense or defense? O-line. O-line. All right, well, let's let's get to the deep first. Cause now, now, you guys, I think, um, kind of set the tone last week. Pitched the shutout. You know, because everybody, as you know, all the guys that uh, follow your team talk about that massive offensive line. How good was it for you for the defense to show, uh, hey, man, we're, we're in this thing, too? I mean, it was just a collective effort. Everybody got after the ball. Everybody got to the ball. It was 11 all in. The whole night. And you guys really just uh, throttled a pretty good MLK team, so you guys kept them at bay. Now, what kind of scheme do you guys run on the defense? What uh, what do you guys normally uh, set up in? Um, basically a 4-3. Okay. 4-3. And we just tell coach to call whatever, we'll make it work. You make it work. You, you like to bring it off the edge. Definitely. With some speed. Definitely. <laughs> well, listen, now tell me a little bit about, uh, I know that uh, uh, Miss Mackey talks about you guys uh, going to the church and doing some things there. Any specific community service that you kind of like? You said, Mr. Simmons, I, this, this is what I like. Um, I mean, I usually go to the um, to the hospital, mm -hmm. help out with my grandmother because she's in there. Oh, that's great. So I go to the hospital, help whenever I want. Okay. Well, listen, now the phone lines are, are burning up here. We have Mr. Sang Langford on the phone. Welcome to our show. How are you? Hi. Number 22. Well, he's out there uh, waiting for his turn to come in the booth, ma'am. So we thank you so much for calling. He can't hear you. There you go. Red Nation is representing in the house. I think we're six or seven deep, so we appreciate you calling. God bless you. All right, your man, uh, tell us here about this offensive line. You guys uh, are really taking the world by storm. Everybody's talking about not only your size, but your ability uh, to move. Uh, what's been the key as far as you guys being able to not just be big, but to be able to pull out on sweeps and be able to handle yourself no matter what play is called? Uh, you know, just, you know, getting to talk to each other during the game, you know. Coach, Coach Frederick, our O line coach, tells us all the time, you know, talk to each other on the field and then do do your correct do your correct plays. So that's all it. So uh, really, and you guys are working like a well-oiled machine, uh, uh, really handling pretty much everybody that you played so far, won by big margins both games. So uh, now the next challenge, playing in the dome. First time playing in the dome for you, either one of you guys, or second time? Uh, second. Second, second time. time. So uh, this this for you now is kind of old hat. The first time you're pretty amped up, right? Yes, sir. But you still have to, when you come out that tunnel, thinking, this is where the Falcons play a game. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. There you go. And I'm sure that you're going to have a lot of fans out there supporting you guys and rooting you guys on. Well, listen, one more time. Uh, first, young man, I'm going to have you uh, talk a little bit about uh, what you like. Same thing. Uh, you do some stuff in the hospital, community stuff. What do you like uh, to do? My mom's a special needs teacher. Oh, so man, that's I like, great. I like to help the special needs out sometimes, go to her school and talk to them, you know, help them out. Okay, now, so far, heading to college, I know you guys can't really get into the thing because of the recruiting, but as far as what you're looking to do in school, do you have a particular course of study you want to lean into so far? Uh, I want to do communications. Okay. I've committed to Alabama to do, uh, they have a great communication studies and all that. Just what I love, folks. Every time I get in, I see the next generation. That guy said communication. What he's really saying is, I want your job, Mr. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you? Um, I'm committed to the University of Georgia. Okay. And I wanted to... Um, major in physical therapy. All right. And uh, a lot of a lot of people's came out of Georgia. It's been great physical therapists. They that's produce. Right. That, that's what they're known for. So, that's what I definitely want to do. So these young men truly are understanding what it is to be the student athlete. These guys are clearly looking at some things that they like to do and some things that will help people uh, when they leave the court. Well, one more time before you leave, just reintroduce yourself. Look in the camera there. Go ahead, number nine. Definitely, man. They trash Patrick. Go dogs. U G L day, baby. <laughs> Dallas one at Mays ride number fifty nine roll time. There we go, folks. We got the maze contingent in the house. We're going to take a quick little break here. We're going to get the uh, next two gentlemen in here to sign in. Again, you're listening to the Real Talk Sports Show as we broadcast to you on Atlanta's incredible radio, WIGO, AM 1570. Good job, good job. You guys handle it nicely, nicely. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You guys, if you want to tweet it up... Touchdown club of Atlanta. Yeah, you're headset. Yeah, you're headset. Atlanta will soon become the new home. 
video stream here's the situation we got a little commercial break right here i got a guy from amazing remember hit us up on twitter at talk sports atl you can find us right there we're on instagram at talk sports atl we're gonna have some video drop and we're gonna have some photos of the guys from maze guys from stockbridge they're mad at me because that's my hometown but we'll have them on in just a minute stay right here stay right here don't move we're about to go back on the air and uh, we are back you're listening to the real talk sports show I'm your host, Minister Jonathan Simmons. Oh, I got a little feedback. <laughs> I'm your host, Minister Jonathan Simmons, and I'm too close to the mic. You're right. I'm doing something too close. Hang on a second. I'm too close to my laptop. There we go. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay, I think we, we're doing good. Oh, my headsets. Oh, gotcha. All right, so we moved out of the situation. Here we go. All right, my engineer is giving me that look like, you're going to blow up all the cords in here. What's wrong with you? Stop it. Stop it. You know better than that. And she's right. We're listening to the Real Talk Sports Show. Again, I'm your host, Minister Jonathan Simmons, and we're broadcasting to you uh, live right here on WIGO AM 1570. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at TalkSportsATL. I have two more young men here from Mays High School who are going to introduce themselves to you right now. My name is Marquavion Brinson. I'm Tasha Brown. All right. What number and what position do you play, young man? Number four, cornerback and safety. Cornerback and safety. Number two, I receive part time and kick time. Well, man, this is, uh, we're not sure what, uh, the, hang on one second. We got the, oh, I see what's going on. Presto. How we doing now? All right, I had to adjust the mic here because, folks, we're doing some live video streaming as well as audio, so we have to make sure that these mics don't get too close. So that's where you have a little situation. But, again, you can check us out on the live stream. Go to the Real Talk Sports Show. And uh, we are broadcasting, again, live on WIGO AM 1570. You also can check us out on the Ustream live page on WIG, excuse me, on Real Talk Sports. I'll get this straight before I go home. Go to the Real Talk Sports page on Facebook, hit the U Street Live button, and you will see us live on the air. Well, young man, first I tell people a little bit about, uh, you know, kind of what year you are and uh, what you're doing over at the DB position. I'm in class 2016, and, you know, I'm just, I'm locked down. I'm describing myself as locked down corner and locked down safety. I don't think all my DBs are locked down, and we don't just, it's no fly zone and none of our zone. All our DBs, we all just locked down. I think we had the best defensive back core in the region. And certainly you guys showed it. I mean, 34 to nothing against, uh, you know, a decent ML King team. You guys just lit them up and said, hey, we're going to have none of it. Yes, sir. And, and uh, you, we were talking about that 4-3 scheme. Uh, it gives you guys a lot of flexibility to kind of, you know, get man up sometime and uh, do what you need to do as far as uh, keeping those wide receivers at bay. Yes, sir. Well, man, listen, uh, it is uh, always exciting when you guys are in the booth, and, it, and it's really interesting because, as you know, everybody talks about your O-line because of the physical size they are, but uh, you guys are doing an outstanding job at every position. Okay, wide receiver, you and your man, talk to us a little bit about how this spread option, this wide open play, allows you uh, to do what you need to do at the wide receiver position. I mean, we got a lot of weapons in the offense that we have. We got a couple of backs. We got Kelsey Tom. We got Charlie Pesciter here with us right now. I mean, we got the, the offense that we run. It's hard. It's hard to try to... We're going to need you to speak up a little bit closer to that mic today. It's hard to try to play defense against the offense that we run. Yeah. So, I mean, we can go deep, we can run. And with the line that we got, just play is happy. And you guys, uh, and like you said, again, 34 to nothing. You guys have scored over 70 points in two games. So uh, you really, really, really are making a statement. Now, going to the dome. First, you, how excited are you to be in that dome? It feels good. I ain't been in the dome in forever. So you're going to be in a situation, man, where there you go. You're going to be live on that field, the same field that the Falcons play, uh, same field that Georgia Tech plays. You are going to be there live on the scene. And so, man, that's going to be a phenomenal thing for you uh, to be able to be out there, isn't it? Yes, sir. And uh, how about you, young man, at the wide receiver position? Are you ready to, to follow the footsteps of uh, we're going to have to kind of make an adjustment here on this? Uh, got you amped up a little bit too high on the, uh, on the headsets here. There we go. How's that feedback now? 
It's gone. Praise the Lord. No more feedback. All right, how's it going to be for you uh, being on the same field that Julio Jones and Roddy White do their thing each and every Sunday? Mm, it's a privilege to be playing at the Dome. I haven't played on the field before, so. So, so this, this is your first time. You, you Rookie on the field. Rookie on the field. So, yeah, man, yeah, now you got, I'm sure your family is going to be very excited. I'm going to have you speak as close as you can to that mic. Right. I'm sure your family is going to be very excited with you being out there on the Dome again, the same field that the Falcons play for each and every Sunday. Yeah, that's a privilege to be playing on that field. It is. Now, for you, before uh, I come back, Community services. All you guys seem to be really big on community service. Church involvement in some way. What do you like to do? Or what things of your activities that you say, hey, Mr. Simmons, I like this? I mean, whatever you need help with. Community service. That's important right now. So whatever you need help with, gotcha. we, we help. How about you, young man? Uh, we just, we'll go around and pick up trash around the school or in the cafeteria when we're just done eating. Now that coaches have played a big part on that about us leaving anything or mess around. Yeah. He don't like that at all. Clean. You know, he's just like clean. He's not, he's not used to dirty, and I don't think none of our parents are either. Well, I tell you, it, it really always makes me feel good when you guys come in here because I get a chance to interview a lot of different high schools, and that seems to be the theme everywhere, uh, especially around Metro Atlanta here, that you guys, the coaches, the parents, want you guys to really be student-athletes. And I admire the fact that you guys understand that, hey, it's great to do great stuff on the field, but you got to do some things off the field as well. Speaking of that, uh, any particular major, yeah, I know it's still early, class of 16, but anything you're kind of looking towards and saying, hey, I might want to study this once I get to college? Um, I'm looking at video broadcast. Okay. Once again, Venus, they're all trying to get my job. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad you mentioned that. And I'm going to put this out here in the airway. Parents, you're listening, booster clubs, uh, coaches. We, in fact, are looking for interns. So if you have a young man or even a young woman that uh, you think would like to come in here and kind of get their feet wet, do some behind-the-scenes stuff, we video stream. Uh, we Like I said, we have a great social media feed. So uh, certainly if you are in that video field, we can have you come on back and uh, maybe just you can kind of do some of what I do. Wouldn't that be great? Yes, sir. How about you, young man? Video broadcast. Video broadcast. I got my whole crew right here in the booth. I don't have to look no further. Praise the Lord. It's, it's, it's the hallway that we're on at our, at our school. We mm -hmm. study video yeah, broadcast. So gotcha. We've been studying this. Well, I've been studying this. is going to be my fourth year taking the class. So, and I guess it's his third. So, well, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, that's, that's kind of where it is. And that's why we take the time. Uh, to do the streaming. We're taping the broadcast. We're streaming live on Ustream right now. Matter of fact, again, folks, you can go to our Real Talk Sports Facebook page and go ahead and uh, hit the Ustream Live button and you will see us broadcasting you live right now. So uh, we're very, very excited to have these two gentlemen here who are going to be helping me very soon to do some stuff here when the season is over. So, uh, gentlemen, we thank you for joining us. One more time, look in the camera. Give people your name, number, and your position. Tasha and Brown, number two. I play wide receiver. Marquavion Brinson, number four, DB. Marquavion Tashon in the house. All right, we got a few more guys out there, I think, from Maze. And then we're going to bring on the gentleman from Stockbridge, my hometown. You're listening to the Real Talk Sports Show. And by the way, everybody, the phone lines have now opened back up, 404-361-1571. You can listen to us online, WIGOAM.com. Good news is on any mobile device, iPad, tablet, iPhone, Android, whatever you got, doesn't matter because you just download the free TuneIn Radio app. Put the real talk the lights. I gotta put the shades on. Shades on. What's going on, young man? How you feeling? How you doing, young man? All right, all right. I'll take on squeeze three guys here. I'm gonna try to do it. Your headset. Your headset. Um, yeah, yeah. And probably what you got to do is you have to share a mic with him. Okay. Hope everybody can see you. See, folks, I got three in the booth now. I don't know if you can see all the maze guys, but they're all here in the building. Talk Sports ATL. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at Talk Sports ATL. Let's go back on the air now. See, when, when video streaming, folks, y'all get to see this behind the scenes. See, the people on the radio, they don't get any of this. So this is an exclusive for y'all. You don't even care about that. I'm not sorry. That's right. We got the maze guys in the house. And don't don't worry, folks. Yes, I know Stockbridge is in my hometown. I am going to bring them on and show them some love. So keep it keep it locked right there. All right. Okay. We got Stockbridge guys out there yet? No. Nobody from Stockbridge? No. All right. 
It's not. No, but I'm. You sure they said they would have put them chains though? Like, if they do, I would put them. Put them I would. All right, all right, all right, all right. We are back on the air here, and. Uh, we're going to finish up amazing. Then uh, we have had a beautiful lady sitting out in the audience thinking, brother, when are we going to talk some Ray Rice? And we're going to bring her on. I'm talking about the Purple Cinderella, the author of a really a tremendous book, uh, really about how you can triumph no matter what in life. I'm talking about Lily Young is in the building. And she's going to be joining us as soon as we finish with these gentlemen right here, the last group of gentlemen from Mays High School. All right. You know the drill, gentlemen. Introduce yourself to everybody with your number and position. My name is Charlie P. I'm number three. Play running back and strong safety. Julius Whitehead, number 10, wide receiver, free safety. Brian Kogan Jackson, uh, number 39, linebacker. You might have to get a little bit closer. Hit that one more time, Brian. Brian Jackson, Kogan, also number 39, I play linebacker. All right, we got the three guys in the house here again. Uh, you, everybody's been talking, as you know, about the offensive line, but you guys really got a well balanced team. We put up over 70 points in, uh, in two games. A defense threw a shutout. Last week, yes, yeah. how do you yes, feel sir. to be a part of a team that is really making some serious noise, not only in Metro Atlanta but across the state of Georgia? I feel good to be on the team, you know. Work hard all summer, and paying out, baby. And you know, I'm not even surprised, man. We've been working, we've been working since last year, so I'm not even surprised at the outcome. It's just, it's just what happens when we work hard every day. And everybody putting the same work. So I'm gonna have you take this mic off here so you can pass it around a little bit easier here. No, you can keep your headset on. Let's have the mic so you can pass it around. Get back to this young man right here. Uh, I just feel like the work that we put in over the summer, and you know, you know, just mentally how we've been preparing for each game is uh, paying off tremendously with uh, the shutouts and seventy points over two weeks. And you guys are doing great stuff. And I want to get with you real quick. Like I said, we're right up against the time here. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit. We got the phone lines jamming and rocking. We got Mays High School in the building. 404-361-1571. Okay, before I go to you, we're gonna bring Jackson on the line. Jackson, welcome to the Real Talk Sports Show. trying to move over here because I don't know if you can uh, catch the video, but your son is in the booth. He got all happy. He said, that's my mom right there. So we're going to try to squeeze him in the picture. He's going to try to wave there to the camera again. You can check us out. Go to the real... Yep, you can go to Real Talk Sports page and you see that Ustream live and you see him grinning. That's my mom. So I'm excited, <laughs> ma'am, because really you're... If, if, She got your mom all excited. She's, she don't know what to do now. She's like, he's doing everything. <laughs> well, listen, we appreciate you. What? Well, ma'am, I'm going to tell you something. Well, funny you should mention it, but uh, I got to let them go now because, like I said, I got my next guest in here. But I will tell you this. I'm committed to have these young men in here and help out and uh, learn their craft, and uh, they can take my job. Not tomorrow, but they can take my job eventually. <laughs> well, Mr. Jackson, we thank you so much. Well, we do it, and we'll, we'll have you back again. You, you can be assured. All right, that's Mace High School here. Wrapped it up. Mr. Jackson there. Well, gentlemen, just uh, go, one more time, wave goodbye to the camera and everybody, and give a quick shout-out. All right, man, I want to shout out all the dirty boys, hot boys, everybody in this high school. Man. I want to shout out to the trainers, man, Mrs. Lackey. I love them. She's like my second mom. And the rest of the maid, how I stand up. I want to shout out to my family, all my friends, and everybody, you know, who supported me. Uh, and also God and, uh, you know, Coach Jarvis and other coaches as well. And Ms. Lackey and trainers. Now, you know that makes the preacher happy. Say God, thank God. Amen. Well, listen, uh, gentlemen, we thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you again real soon. All right, well, these gentlemen getting set here. We're going to bring uh, the lovely lady of the evening. She's been waiting patiently to get in here. So, gentlemen, when you go out, bring that beautiful lady in, Miss Lily Young. Yeah, I got it. I know everybody's excited about escorting her in, but uh, just one guy, please, uh, bring Miss Lily Young in and let her come on in and get set here in the booth here. She is our special guest for the evening. Uh, we have uh, three callers stacked up. So as Miss Young is coming in, we're going to take caller number one. Caller, go ahead, introduce yourself. Welcome to the Real Talk Sports Show. 
waiting patiently for over an hour no to get in here, so we want to get her on here. Uh, welcome to our show, Miss Lily Young. Hi, I'm glad to be here. Well, it's glad to have you here. Uh, certainly, uh, I always enjoy uh, having uh, interesting guests in here, and certainly we'd like to bring you back. Uh, when the uh, we're not talking about such negative news, uh, but uh, nevertheless, we're going to uh, keep it real because we're called Real Talk Sports. Uh, we're going to do this really quick before you hop on here. We're going to let Mr. Football give a quick shout out. Vince, are you there, sir? All right, so we got uh, about 15 seconds, sir. Give me a shout out. What you got? What you got? Thank you, kind sir. All righty, that was Mr. Football, Vincent W. Turner. Everybody just said, you know. Uh, if you want to hear the best in football talk every Saturday, 100 yards of football, Mr. Football, Vincent W. Turner, drops it like it's hot. NFL, uh, college football, you name it, they bring it. Now they have a new show, the SEC Wrap-Up, on every Tuesday featuring the Beecham Brothers from Alabama. Well, Mr. Lee Young, uh, as you know, I'm going to move one of these mics back okay. because we're getting a little action here from the mic. Okay. Let me get you in close right here like this, perfecto. Um, okay. A lot of stuff going on right now mm -hmm. in the NFL. None of it really is that good. We have a situation where we have a young man uh, who up until this point uh, of this incident had been a stellar athlete, a pillar in the community. I was listening to people from Baltimore talking about all he's done in the community. But nevertheless, yes. you've seen what I've seen, yes. a video where the, the guy has uh, literally knocked his wife out with a vicious uh, left hook, looked like Joe Frazier back in the day. <laughs> and so uh, now... I think that a lot of people have kind of rushed the judgment on him. Uh, mm -hmm. They want him basically to never play football again. I hear a lot of people talking about that. I hear a lot of people uh, saying how horrific he is and almost trying to equate him like an animal. But there seemed to be some little give and take in that film that we saw. Yes, and the reason that I feel there's a lot of give and take, and everybody has their own outlook and their own view or everything that they have seen, on the video before what I have seen I saw her first spit on him and hit him and when they got on the elevator I saw her hitting at him and he did punch her and I believe from my own experience of doing things like that to a man if you hit a man expect to get hit back alright now I just want to make this plain folks just so anybody doesn't get too excited here we obviously don't want to say in any way we're endorsing domestic violence. No. And nor is Lily saying that. That's not um, what I'm saying. But what we're trying to say is, is that there there are a lot of sides to this story. Certainly, as we watched the whole mm -hmm. tape, we saw that maybe Ray might have spit on her as well. With just a lot yeah, of stuff that's was what going I have on. Heard too, but from what I saw, I didn't see that because mm -hmm. there's so many different ones around that has been cut. So from what I saw that's been posted on Facebook, yep. I saw her spit on him, him and hit her. But a man should walk away as a woman should walk away. No one should put their hands on anyone. But I'm a firm believer. If you put your hands on someone, expect to get hit back. And there's always a danger. And again, as a guy, I mean, raised up in a little bit different generation from you, we were constantly absconded that you don't touch a woman under any I, circumstances. I was raised that way too. Unless, now unless it was your sister. That's something a little different. Mm -hmm. Now your sister, you can kind of get in with her. But anybody else, that was off limits. You didn't touch anybody else, didn't put your hands on anybody else. And so certainly we want to make sure that we make this absolutely plain that we're telling every young man out there. I do not condone violence. Right, that you keep your hands to yourself. Remember that even the Bible says treat the woman as the weaker vessel. I do know that you have female athletes now. I do know that women are getting bigger and bigger every day, but that's not the point. The point is, is that as a man, you have to say, I'm going to control myself beyond maybe the norm. Also, with you being a football player, professional football player, you know about discipline, and that's it. But I want to bring up something to you, which, which I think is the backstory of all this. Mm -hmm. It seems like, first of all, uh, the NFL and everybody involved in this have not been forthcoming of all the evidence because... It's like every day another piece of video comes out. That's the yes, first thing. Yes, that's true. Second thing is is that no one, and I know you've experienced this, no one seems to be caring at all about the woman herself because I know that she's quote-unquote trying to stand by her man and so forth, but you know as a woman, you know once you marry or engage with someone, you are in a somewhat vulnerable position. I mean, you know, this guy, has, he's the father of your children. Uh, he's now providing your income for you and your house. So how much of that might be going into her saying, hey, let's just drop this thing and let it go? Um, I honestly believe she does feel that way, but she does feel that way too. Me being a person that has put her hand on a man before in my past, I was like probably 21, 
she feels that way because she feels some of the blame because she knows for herself who hit first. And she may have been the person that hit first. So you're going to feel bad. I've been there. And, and the sad thing about all this, really, which I think is the one thing that people are losing in all this argument, whether it was race ball, it was white ball, mm -hmm. is that domestic violence is a serious business. It's a serious thing. I mean, you've experienced it's it. It's terrible. Um, you know, again, for people to find out more about your story, they can uh, uh, certainly uh, look at the, uh, the the Purple Cinderella. And it's a lot. is a learned behavior because uh, I watched my stepmother fight my father when I was a small, very small child. And I dated someone that was very abusive towards me, and I learned that behavior, and I took it into another relationship when it was a great guy, and I put my hands on him. I'm honest, and a lot of women will not be honest. They'll say, I never have done that, and a lot of them are lying, but they think it's okay to put your hands on a man, and they can't put their hands on you. Yes, a man can hit harder, and yes, a man should walk away, but we as women, we shouldn't put our hands on them either. There's no doubt. I mean, I, there's two sides to every story. Again, just want to put that PSA out there. We're not endorsing domestic violence. Not at all. Men, please, go do this. Go take a walk. Go jog. Go lift some weights. Go call your boys up. Go somewhere else. But you don't want to do that. Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think it's inappropriate. Number two, you're going to go to jail. It's inappropriate on both ends. Right. And your career is going to be over. I mean, I can tell you that right now. Now, here's the other thing. I, I think there's a lot of hypocrisy going on right now in the NFL mm -hmm. and our society. Uh, as Ray Rice has now been indefinitely uh, banned from the NFL, we now have breaking news story that's been festering for a while that probably the most um, uh, well-known owner in the NFL, Jerry Jones, has now been brought up charges himself mm -hmm. on sexually assaulting a woman and also being involved in some illicit sexual activities. And this is not good for a man who's in his 70s and has been married for a minute. No, not at all. <laughs> and so far, uh, we have no censorship of Mr. Jones. Again, these are charges. I want to say, folks, that these are charges. He's not gone to trial yet. Mm -hmm. But it seems to almost be kind of almost sometimes a double standard. That if you have a lot of money, if you're an owner, you're not looked at the same standard. We know that uh, Mr. Isray in uh, the Indianapolis Colts, the guy was found with the equivalent almost of a, uh, of a pharmaceutical den in his car. He got a $500,000 fine. And uh, he's still allowed to be the owner of the Colts. So do you think there's any type of double standard going on in the NFL and maybe in our society? Of course it is, very much. It's a double standard completely because I myself, from what I see is happening to Ray Rice, that should have been some form of punishment, but I do not believe he should have been fired. Well, I'm going to tell you, there's, there's a lot of people out there that have opinions on both sides of the aisle. I'll just, again, reiterate the facts. Somehow or another, uh, whose fault, my fault, nobody's fault, the actual full tapes that we're beginning to see in Drips and Drabs now were not released. Because I think they were released, there might have been a different situation from the beginning as far as the type of penalty that Ray received. Number two, um, the NFL, I think, might be lying. If that's the case, Roger Goodell is going to have to put under the same you know, penalty that he has. Well, listen, uh, the, I can't believe it. the show is about to wrap up. We want to have you back, but before you awesome. leave, please give people your information where they can contact you, Instagram, Twitter, you know the drill. Okay. I am Lily Young, The Purple Cinderella. I have a book that's coming out, The Purple Cinderella, November 1st, documentary coming out. You can contact me at www.thepurplecinderella.com, Facebook, Lily Young, Instagram, Lily Young, uh, Twitter, Diamonds, Pearls. There you go right there. Well, listen, before I go, I want to give the minister's minute before we get off the air. All this talk about people behaving nefariously, I want to end with, with sad and good news. Uh, recently, this past week, a giant in the industry of business, a giant in the Christian faith, uh, S. Truett Cathy, went on to be with the Lord. Now, in stark contrast to what we've been talking about earlier, mm -hmm. Mr. Cathy lived 93 years on this planet, and since 1946, he has done nothing to provide good food, but with faith, never opened his doors on one Sunday, but yet his business amassed over $5 billion in sales last year. They have over 1,800 restaurants in 40 states. He left a life well-lived, letting you know that you can be a man of faith, a man of God, a man of business, a man of excellence, and not compromise your standards. Well, everybody, you know what I'd like to do each and every week before I leave you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, I implore you. Please, ma'am, please, sir, get to know him. He loves you more than your mama, auntie, and them, grandmama, and them. Amen. And he will turn your life around and make you something that you would never have thought you have been. Well, we got to go now. On behalf of everybody here at WIGO, my guest, Lily Young, all the people at Mays High School, Raider Nation, God bless you. God bless. And good night. Good night.